Hey y'all, I want to show you a couple things, but first I want you to see I weeded this morning. Like as soon as I woke up, all I did is I brushed my teeth, I came out here and I weeded. And there's still some more to do, but it looks so much better. Now, I have a couple beautiful things that I want you to see. So I've been coming to the outside of my garden to get the twine vine for the guys. You know who I'm talking about. You can see like it has a lot of growing back to do. <laughs> and there's eggs on it. <laughs> Um, and I've got some better growing down here, but I'm also very low on it because I've been bringing it in for cuttings. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is one of my wild black cherry trees. And I want to show you something. Look at how pretty these tiny little blooms are. And they're little white flowers, but then the leaf stems get these little red um, I don't know what they are, right at the base of the leaf. And it's so incredibly pretty all together. Wild black cherry tree. Yes, please. Here's another one. This one's covered with flowers. Are you kidding me? Do you see what's right there? Do you see what's right there? We're not even anywhere near my milkweed, except a little bit of twine vine. Are you? Y'all, I did not plan this. I did. I promise you. <laughs> oh my gosh. What are you doing there? I wonder if he's going to pupate there. Okay, y'all, no, I see. Look, there is twine vine wrapped around and he's on it. Is that not something? Oh my gosh. That's totally not what I came to show you, but how fun is that? All right, so back to the wild black cherry tree. Isn't it just gorgeous? So the wild black cherry tree is a host plant too. Are you ready? Are you ready for this number? 450 different species of butterflies and moths. Now, the one that I get on it is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. <laughs> and it's not a host to the monarch, even though there's a monarch caterpillar on it, which I still cannot believe we found that there. Okay, so I want to share this plant with you or tree and um, show you how gorgeous it is, but also let you know it does serve as a great addition to a butterfly garden because it is a host to some beautiful butterflies and incredibly gorgeous moths. And if you can't find it, um, Joyful Butterfly usually carries it. And um, I, have a, I, have an affiliate, I have an affiliate link to Joyful Butterfly. If you want to use my link to go shopping, um, they do sell out of it a lot, but you can keep checking back. And the ones I order from Joyful Butterfly actually have in pots. This one came up on its own, which is fabulous. And I'm pretty sure it came up from this one, which is the one we intentionally planted. And it's out in the full sun in my side yard, which is eventually going to become a field of wildflowers. And it's just now getting ready to put out some blooms, which I find interesting. Oh no, here's one that's blooming. Look at how pretty that is. And as you can see, they can get pretty tall, but the one we were just looking at, I have trimmed and it's going to stay smaller so they can be um, maintained. But this is where I get my eggs from the Eastern Tiger Swallowtails. Look at those little golf fritillaries over there. Can you see them flying around the Maypop Mansion? So cute. So while we're here, I've already convinced my husband to not mow from the 
line where the wild black cherry tree is back to the fence in the Maypop mansion. And I'm just gonna naturally let this fill in with whatever naturally occurs. Most people would call them weeds in Florida, but they are such beneficial plants and host plants to some adorable small butterflies. Like this Biden's Alba right here is a host to the fiery skipper, but there's a lot of other little weedy plants here that serve an important purpose so they're going to grow free in this area and look if you'll notice there's maypop passion vine coming up <laughs> there's a couple of them now that i'm down here looking oh oh well i mean where's it gonna go it's a vine will it cover the ground time will tell Oh my, here's another one. Look how big this one is here, coming right up out here. Oh, okay, okay. And look at these two waiting on the other side of the fence for me to come back in. So right now I'm actually getting ready to head to the nectary. I'm gonna buy all their swamp milkweed. I'm not leaving one plant. I'm gonna buy a lot because Everything's been eaten back. I don't even have good twine vine cuttings to take inside and they're still eating. For example, this is my giant milkweed. I showed it to you a while ago. Oh, well, in the, in the last video. And look who's right here. This poor little guy has like very little left to eat. So I'm just going to get a bunch of swamp milkweed and plant it in here. Look right here is another one. This is a giant milkweed. It's been eaten all down. Look at this big guy here. He's on the last little chunk of leaf. I mean, this is what my whole garden is like. Look at my balloon milkweed. <laughs> now there's still some, some good green leaves on here still. And why am I trying to get some more blue milkweed grown? I just wasn't, I don't know if I recall ever having this many thriving caterpillars in my garden. It's like nothing is eating them, which is yay. Remember how upset I used to get when they'd all disappear? But now the only thing disappearing is my milkweed. They're all staying around and they're eating all of it. And look how adorable. Oh my gosh. Hello, cuteness. And then in here, I mean, you can see how many tubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, no, this one is uh, me pop. That I have brought in of the twine vine. And they're still eating. And you know, the ones that I put up top, they literally, as soon as I put the twine vine in, they came back down and ate some more. But now, fortunately, there are a lot up top. Oh, and look what's happening right now. Look at that. Golf fritillaries pupating. Isn't that fascinating? You go, baby. You go. And guess what? Right behind it is a golf fritillary butterfly that just declosed. And we'll be, well, I'll be releasing it later today. You may or may not be with me. Because as soon as it's ready to go, I'm going, I'm going to let it go. And then I'll do a quick pan. You can see we now have a lot of jay hangers up here which is fabulous and now we're gonna go to the nectary hey y'all i'm here it took me forever to get here it's spring training and detroit tigers do their spring training here and i drove right down the road where the stadium is but i finally made it so i'm here see all these they're all going to be in my garden <laughs> No, just kidding, but I am going to get a lot. I've got tons of milkweed. Let's go plant it. This is going to be 
This is going to be awesome. Okay, I just got home, and first things first, somebody is ready to fly. There you go. Well, there were two. And now for the precarious part, I'm going to start digging out space in and amongst my current milkweed garden to get all these plants in there. And not only do I have to be careful not to disturb the existing plants, but I also have to look out for caterpillars that could be crawling on the ground trying to find a, another source of nourishment. <laughs> So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like dig a little meandering trail in and through this area and then just kind of set all the plants in and then refill it all at once instead of just planting one at a time. You can see them all over there in my cart. There's currently two monarchs that I see in here. Look. Guess what she's trying to do? Mm -hmm. And the other monarch is over in my other little milkweed section by my chair. I think she's down laying eggs on my swamp milkweed growing back or growing in over there. Let's go see. Is she down there? Oh, there she is. <laughs> How fun is that? All right, so let's go get these guys in the ground. See, like right here, I dug out this little section and then I was able to fit two plants in there. And then I've cleared the pine bark out and I'm just gonna kind of dig out in and amongst here and keep putting more plants in and then fill it all in at once. I've got my little dirt pile I'm building up in the corner to fill them in. See, and this is why you have to be careful when digging around already planted milkweed. This little guy was just on this little piece of mulch and in the middle of the dirt. Uh, he was actually kind of under it. And I just saw the little speck of stripes and I knew exactly who it was. So he's going to go get on one of the new plants. There you go, sir. You like that. Yes, you will. So as I'm digging new holes, I'm using the dirt I take out of the new hole to fill in around the other plants. So that's working out quite nicely. And then when I get to my last hole, I'll use my dirt pile to fill in the last hole. And I just found another little guy. <laughs> My gosh, they're so adorable. You, sir, are going to get a beautiful, fresh plant to munch on. It's your lucky day. Y'all, this is the best. I'm actually sweating. I love it. I love digging. I love planting. I've got all the swamp milkweed in except for two that I'm holding on to. Look, dirty fingers. Yes. Just in case I need some for the lepidarium, which I already put one in there. I keep saying, okay, those guys, they're so big. They've got to be pupating today. And here we are. Now this is the milkweed garden. I've been dreaming of. I thought I was going to grow my own, but it has been obstinate for me. Um, but that's all. That's another story, and I, I think I've got the answers to that. But look, it's like a whole little mini field of swamp milkweed, Asclepias incarnata, native to Florida. Common milkweed is not. It's native everywhere else. So if you're somewhere else, use common milkweed. It's fabulous in Florida. Swamp milkweed. I also use some non natives like my lovely giant milkweed. And see how I left a lot of space around there because that thing can get big and I didn't want it to overshadow 
my swamp so I put the swamp like right along the edge and then I also have balloon milkweed which I grow and love I have some growing but it's not big enough to plant in the garden yet um, but I might go order some from Joyful Butterfly because they sell it there and I don't have to worry about having a Florida ecotype because it's not native to Florida. So if y'all like caterpillars and butterflies and butterfly gardening, <laughs> then subscribe to my channel and remember to tap the like button. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one.